wanted to make a very quick video on the subject of straightway truth, uh, which is a Hebrew roots group, group uh, it might be said an Israelite group, a Hebrew Israelite group down in Tennessee, which is led by Pastor Dowell. Uh, and I wanted to do a quick video on straightway truth and the Ten Commandments. Now, full disclosure, I don't know much about the straightway group. Uh, I only know a tiny bit about them. However, the group has uh, been in the news recently. I don't know much about the story. However, uh, Vocab Malone will be doing a live show on the subject in a few hours on his channel uh, in a video titled Dowell Followers Arrested Because of Christmas, and you can check that out at his channel. Now, this brief video won't be covering that subject. Instead, it'll be focusing on the minor bit of familiarity that I have with Pastor Dowell's group, with the Straightway group, which pertains to the Ten Commandments. First and foremost, that the first time uh, Pastor Dowell's group sort of uh, came on my radar, the first time I became aware of it, it was a few years ago when he did a video about the Pope allegedly changing the, the Ten Commandments. He got his information on that from a satirical news site called Real News Right Now. Uh, for those who don't know, Real News Right Now is, as I said, it's a satirical site. It's not a serious site. Apparently, Pastor Dowell didn't know that. He took it quite seriously. It's on par with, you know, taking something from The Onion or The Babylon Bee seriously. Nonetheless, uh, in his, it was a video of his from 2015 titled The Pope to Change the Ten Commandments. And... Uh, I found it somewhat humorous, um, and I don't mean that in disrespectfully towards Pastor Dowell. Nonetheless, uh, here, let me play a couple of minutes from that video, just a few different clips that will amount to about two minutes worth of uh, footage from that. Here we go. Anyway, I'm going to read it right here. Pope Francis says, this is what he says, God has instructed me to revise the Ten Commandments. During his sermon, Pope Francis announced to Christians around the world that God had called upon him, instructing him, listen to this, to revise the most sacred text, the Ten Commandments. The Pope said the updated commandments reflecting the changing times, reflecting the changing times, and including some major uh, rewording of the existing rules, as well as the additional of two new commandments. Hmm. So it'll be very interesting, huh? The fourth commandment, which advocates the proper respect be shown towards one's parents, has been reworded in order to include children raised by same-sex parents. Pope Francis said the seventh commandment prohibiting adultery, prohibiting adultery, and among other things, homosexuality has been removed entirely as instructed by God. Addressing the inclusion of the new commandments, which bring a total number to 11. Well, it's no longer 10. Now we got 11 commandments. The new fifth commandment, which replaces the prohibit, you know, the prohibition on adultery, forbids all aspects of genetic engineering and bans the consumption of genetically modified foods. Lastly, the 11th commandment disallows personal idol, idolization. Well, the Pope said, selfies are an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. A spokesman for the Vatican, Father Frederic, Frederico, whatever his name, Lombardi, said, the 11 commandments are currently being etched into marble by an Italian sculpture and upon completion, will be unveiled to the world in St. Peter's Square following an internationally televised mass. Now, aside from that curious issue with Pastor Dowell misunderstanding a satirical site uh, about the Pope and the Ten Commandments, the one other thing that I knew about his group was that in his church or his assembly hall, whatever it is that the group calls it, there's two plaques showing the Ten Commandments in Hebrew, and I found those two plaques particularly interesting, and you can see them here on their screen, on your screen. They were in his assembly hall for about four and a half years the earliest video i saw to include them was from may of 2015 
They seem to have recently been removed as they haven't appeared in any of the videos from the last two months. The last video I saw to include them was from October of 2019 of this year. If they have in fact been removed, that would be interesting. Uh, I wouldn't know why precisely they were removed, why they would be removed. I wouldn't know what the precise motivation uh, would be, but I can speculate as uh, First and foremost, there was a rather glaring spelling error within them, uh, although it's one that could be easily fixed with a little paintbrush, I assume. Second, uh, it had it followed a very sort of rabbinic style in terms of the way it divided up the commandments and also uh, in its approach to, for example, the first commandment. For those who don't know, uh, rabbinic Jews, Catholics, and most Protestants divide up the Ten Commandments in three different ways. And the way the commandments were divided up in that particular plaque followed the sort of rabbinic Jewish division. It would be curious if they were using a the rabbinic approach to the commandments because he's Pastor Dowell is uh, pretty clear in his rejection of mainstream Jewish populations. That Hebrews are not those present dwellers that are called Israelis, that have many designations such as Ashkenazi, which you will read about in Genesis 10. They are the Gentiles um, or Khazarians. I don't care how much conversion or whatever they say that they have done. But Yah was not going to use a goy, um, those Ashkenazis or those Israelis. Whatever the case, in this video, I'd like to take a look at some of the curious aspects of Straightway's Ten Commandments display, in particular the first three commandments and uh, what they imply. The first curious feature and distinctly rabbinic feature appears right in the depiction of the first commandment where it reads Anochi and then it has the letter He, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, followed by a Gedish, which is a Hebrew diacritical mark, a diacritic which resembles an apostrophe and signifies an abbreviation. So the He with a Gedish signifies an abbreviation of the word Hashem. So this reads Anochi Hashem, where the phrase, oh, excuse me, the word Hashem, which literally means the name, stands in place of the Tetragrammaton. The practice of putting a He with a Gerish as an abbreviation of Hashem in place of the Tetragrammaton, in place of the biblical name for God, is a clearly rabbinic practice. And so it's curious that it appears in the Ten, Ten Commandments display in Pastor Dowell's church, as he's obviously not shy about uh, displaying the Tetragrammaton or pronouncing it. It appears right on the podium which is to say it appears on the lectern or pulpit from which he preaches right at the center of his church, right at the front of his church. You see it right there at the bottom of your screen. That's the Tetragrammaton uh, written in the Phoenician script. So, you know, he would not have any reason to employ the rabbinic practice of putting some sort of a symbol in place of the Tetragrammaton. Yet that rabbinic feature appears in his Ten Commandments display. And it's rather curious. The next curious feature comes in the second line, which is quoting from Exodus 20, verse 3, where it should read, Lo yihye. However, the second word has a misspelling. The second letter of the second word should be a he. You can compare the incorrect spelling, which appears in his display, highlighted in red, to the correct spelling, which I have emblazoned just underneath it. So notice that second letter of the second word. His looks like this, where now they look the same as I've changed the second letter of the second word from a he to a dalit. So for about four and a half years, they had this display up at the front of their church or their assembly hall uh, with this spelling error in it, and apparently no one noticed until maybe recently. And then the next uh, curious feature, uh, not so curious, not a huge deal, but it's one that's of interest to me. The third commandment, uh, Lotisa, starts the, is taken from the beginning of Exodus 20, verse 7. So... If the third commandment begins with lo tisa, then the second commandment, which began with lo yihye, entails that the second commandment runs from Exodus 20, verse 3, all the way to Exodus 20, verse 6. 
So just to recap, his the, the straightways Ten Commandment display, which clearly mirrored a rabbinic division of the Ten Commandments, has the first commandment corresponding to Exodus 20, verse 2. Then it has the second commandment beginning at Exodus 20, verse 3, and going all the way to verse 6. And then it has the third commandment beginning at Exodus 20, verse 7. I do not believe that that division of verses was intentional. Rather, I assume the artist who made their display probably did something like Google Ten Commandments in Hebrew and then just copied what he found online, or maybe they were in a Judaica shop and they copied something there. But this is clearly the rabbinic division. I would invite uh, viewers to contemplate those verses. Try to imagine the first commandment being simply Exodus 20, verse 2, uh, the second commandment running from verse 3 to verse 6, and then the third commandment starting at verse 7. Uh, that's uh, an interesting division, especially the second commandment, uh, because it comes up in terms of how the second commandment should be understood. If the second commandment runs from verse 3 all the way to verse 6, and that block of text is that those four verses are a single commandment, then that approach to the second commandment would sort of undermine attempts to use the second commandment in the service of iconoclasm, which is to say the second commandment wouldn't simply be a rejection of all imagery, rather if that's a single commandment, if those four verses from verse 3 to verse 6 are a single commandment, then it's referring to images within the context of other gods, or at least that could be argued. You know, this sort of approach to the division of the commandments, as I said, undermines uh, iconoclastic appeals to the uh, Ten Commandments, and I think that's interesting as well, because I imagine that on a certain level, Pastor Dowell's church uh, has certain uh, iconoclastic tendencies vis-a-vis -vis religious art. Whatever the case, that's it for me. That's all I wanted to say, uh, being that Straightway apparently removed their Ten Commandments display. I wanted to make this very short video on Straightway and the Ten Commandments because their display had clear rabbinic features in terms of its uh, rendering of the Tetragrammaton and its division of the commandments vis-a-vis -vis the specific verses. And it also had a rather glaring spelling error, which, again, that's... Uh, not a huge deal. I hope the members of Straightway don't take offense to this. It's, I just wanted to point out this interesting uh, aspect of Straightway's history being that this display was up in their gathering hall for about four and a half years. On that note, I look forward to the comments of others. Uh, as always, God bless.